Recording, stop recording, oh shit. Long time no see everyone. I am the currently unwatched Zale Anti. I am here to show you a tutorial on one of the most requested features that are usually used in one of my videos, which is how to add weapons and items and stuff to having your little avatar and or actors be able to hold, which will have a brief explanation on how to do this little feature that I use many times in my videos to help give an added effect for whatever story that you're trying to tell. Do pay mind that I do use different softwares and and apps and do have different operating systems and other people so as far as this video goes I'm going to so far as assume that you know how all three of these already work as far as being able to explore them if any of these are actually new to you you've never used them before I do recommend that you do play around with it that is the best way to discover how anything works is to by doing it by yourself and then after that coming back to this video and not understanding a lot of what I'm about to explain I'm gonna give you guys a huge disclaimer here to please not use any of these skills to do any stories or plots where it involves, you know, school shootings, anything that has like a mass shooting, anything pressing, honestly, you know, because I know a lot of you are like 14 and will end up just exploiting it anyways. Jesus is watching. You don't want to make Jesus sad, right? You little sick fuck. So first what we're going to do is we're going to open up the app. We're going to take the subject who we're going to be using the exact clothes as well, especially with the torso, and we're just going to put them looking at a ghost. Now you can either use the green, black, or white backgrounds for this. I recommend using green because it makes it much easier to zone that out it gives Photoshop an easier time of being able to cut out your subject without having any lines or without photoshopping too much out of it. And so first thing what we're going to do is we're going to use the thumbs up emote for whoever your subject is going to be. This will give us the hand holding motion for either the weapon or the item that you plan on using for your video. And for the gun, obviously I'm going to use the accusing one. So what you're going to do is you're going to make sure that you have it a maximized size picture that you can and you're going to screenshot that. You don't have to have them moving or anything, they'll pretty much just have the exact emote or exact um, fitting of the hands where you need them to be. Take your screenshot and then move it over to whatever photoshopping app that you use. Again, I use Bazaar. You use Bazaar because it is a really cool app. It has everything that I need to use for it. It's what I use for all my thumbnails, my images, my extras. It's a very wonderful app with so many different combinations and items in it. Um, it's about $6 a month and it's completely worth it. Because I'm worth it. <coughs> God, joking. <coughs> So I'm gonna do a fast time lapse for this. You just gotta like pay attention to detail when you're doing things, but wait, hold it, do zoning. You know, try not to make things look unnatural unless that's what you're going for. It takes patience and it takes time to do this. And it can be a very, you know, time consuming process. But once you have the final product and you're happy with it, you'll be glad that you were able to take the time to do it. Detail is going to be key when doing this. It's what's going to make your audience think that your character is actually holding this. The item being held will have a different consistency and details, a little finer, a little weirdly shading, but that's okay. We're going to finish that in editing with the movie maker. So if you're wondering how to find a sword or a gun, you can go on the Google and type in sword or gun dot with a PNG. This is important to her to be a PNG for it to be transparent because it needs to show up on your video as that. Or if you have a Photoshopping app that's able to do that as well. I do recommend you using something with a transparent background, but if you can't, then it's okay to kind of crop it out of whatever border that it's that's surrounding it. So you can have just an image of that because it's a difference between exporting a picture to your movie maker that looks like this, but you want it to look like this. Now it's time to get our scene. Boy, that was really boring. Now let's see what happens when we add our image that we just made to it. Looks great, right? Not just yet, no. We need to be able to scale our video so it looks like the shoulder of the image is running up with the shoulder of the character. Fantastic. Now it's important to make sure that your image is moving with the shoulder as well. As you know in Plotagon, even with the idle standbys, the shoulder is going to be moving and you want the image to follow that to look like it's attached and part of the body. You leave it just sitting there and it's like, well, what, what was that even about? You want it to look authentic. You want to look like it is a part of it, at least the best that you can. So now that you've done that, do a little brightness and color editing with your movie maker. That is very important to do. You want it to make it look authentic. Authentic. Okay. I gotta stop smelling this candle. And 
and boom, there you go. You now have an aesthetic that most people don't have in their Polygon videos, and you will definitely be known for it. Detail is key when making videos. If you're gonna make art or anything like that, well then you gotta stand out. So if you use PC or Android, please feel free to put all the applications that you use in the comments below. That way you can help fellow users of the same devices be able to try out and use this certain uh, tutorial skill that I'm trying to teach. And as always, feel free to follow my channel, feel free to follow any of my social media outputs, and obviously stay safe, be safe, and uh, have a good day. I'm gonna go back to my